this is Ina Langerman from Violina.Live helping you along your musical journey. Literally, this video is going to be all about flying with the violin. It's the middle of summer 2021. More and more airlines are filling up. Actually, last I checked, Delta has been completely packed. The middle seats are being used again. For those of you who have never traveled with your violin before, here are some things that have been very helpful to me. These are things that I follow for myself time and time again. It's always been very reliable for me. So for this video, I am going to focus a little bit more about short trips. So something like one or two days, um, especially if somebody is traveling for a gig or an audition you know you're probably not going to be there for two weeks or something like that in general when i travel i try to avoid having any checked in luggage i just have completely all carry on i'll grab a backpack and that's my personal item and my violin that's my carry on so of course rule number one it's the most obvious one never ever ever check in your violin as a checked in luggage that's absolutely out of the question because uh, there is absolutely no temperature control where the luggage is being held it's not going to be handled well you've probably seen a lot of news about tsa agents mishandling instruments and if you're wondering hey will my violin case fit up there yes yes it will i promise that actually i have two musafia cases here is one of them this thing fits in the overhead bin, even on the smallest planes I've ever been on. I also have a smaller Musafia case that's more shaped and with a, also with a music pocket. That's even better. And actually, I switched to that one because it's much lighter. And another question I always see people asking about traveling with the violin is, should I loosen my strings and uh, to prevent any extra tension? And the short answer? I've never done that. Um, no, don't loosen your strings. It's going to mess up your sound post. I personally do not recommend it. Um, if there is a luthier watching this and who disagrees with me, I'm interested in your perspective. So put that down in the comments below. So I would like to learn what you think about that. But no, do not loosen your strings. Just carry your violin in its case the way you normally would down the street. More often than not, when I take my violin off the plane, the worst thing that's gonna happen is the strings they loosen themselves over time from being up there for moving around the case moving around for during turbulence or whatever so regarding tsa and maybe some of you listening have encountered problems with some of the agents that tell you hey you cannot bring that up there before you book your flight first of all check the website of the airline and look at all of their rules read through everything. Many airlines now include a section about musical instruments and definitely print that out, okay? Uh, either have a copy of that like on your phone or but I do recommend you actually print it out and put it in your case and bring it with you in case somebody starts in that airline starts to argue with you certain airlines I do try to avoid <coughs> United because you know they do have a bad reputation and hopefully that's going to change in the future um, one airline that has always been really really good for me and this is not sponsored it's Delta Delta has been so good for me I've flown with Delta with my instrument all around the world it's always been very very consistent and if you get a, a bad agent on Delta, it's not the company, it's probably that person's having a lousy day or something. So if that happens, you know, get somebody else to help you out in that situation. And of course, I've also flown with Norwegian and Aer Lingus. They've always been really cool with instruments, no problem. And definitely in the worst case scenario, if you encounter a really, really big problem, you get on the train, they absolutely are not letting you keep your instrument with you. I would say get off the plane, you know, in the worst case situation possible. Absolutely do not comply with them trying to make you put that in the check-in. Now, regarding there actually being a room up there in the bins, you can consider getting pre-boarding. What that means is you will get priority to get on the plane before all the other groups because they usually get on the plane in groups and a lot of times if you just get a basic coach ticket you'll probably be in one of the last groups and there's less of a chance there's going to be a room up there so you can consider pre-boarding it i think it's about 15 dollars extra or something like that i personally have never done that i usually take the risk i almost never fly during peak season so i rarely almost never fly 
like this time of year in the in the middle of the summer and if i absolutely have to fly in the middle of the summer i make sure to pick a day that's not popular so tuesdays and wednesdays sometimes even monday but tuesdays and wednesdays generally are less crowded it's a less popular day to fly in general and uh, tuesdays sometimes they're actually cheaper it's a little secret that many airlines don't tell you it's not always true but you know you can check out and compare now i did have one situation where i got on the plane I, I was going to chicago in the middle of winter it was february off season and the flight was completely full i was in the last group i think i was like one of the last people to get on board there was no room overhead at all now i got very very lucky so i had a window seat and actually i was flying with my sister so that kind of helped i was wearing my heavy coat because it's the middle of winter chicago is very cold this time of year i put my violin against the window i took off my coat and hung it over it completely couldn't see there was a violin there the flight attendants either they didn't notice or they just ignored it but i went through the entire flight with my violin right next to me that one trip so i, I got lucky but if you are getting on a full flight and you are in one of the last groups one thing that's really helpful is when you are going towards your seat instead of waiting until you get to your row and check in for a room up there instead of doing that as you are walking toward the back start looking around and keep a mental note where there is room on your way towards the back and if you're looking ahead and you're seeing around your area it looks really really packed up there i would say put your violin right away in one of the bins that's closer to the front i've done that several times and it really saved me an extra headache put the violin up there before you get there because there are other people behind you trying to get on the plane so you put the violin in one of the other bins right away write down take note which row and which number bin this is so you don't forget it later if you think you're gonna remember you know write it down anyway because chances are you know after a couple hours you might forget or be like where was it again everybody's trying to get off so let's go back to talking about short flights and not having to have any checked in luggage so if you're going on a short trip like two or three days and you're really just going for like a gig or an audition and you don't want to waste time at the airport waiting for your luggage to appear you want to get out of the airport and go to your hotel or wherever you're going maybe you have a business meeting or a rehearsal right away um, after landing so one thing that has been helpful for me if i notice that i'm really running out of space in my in my backpack is i have one of these which fits around my case actually it's called the joey i got it i think i got it on char and what it is is it's basically a cover for your violin so you can fit your case right here in the middle and you can fit either an oblong case or the shaped one they both fit so it fits in like this and my other case the shaped one also fits in just as well and of course this case has its own music pocket but right over here what you will do is you're going to clasp it right over here and the same on the bottom and you can also adjust how tight it is here and on the other side really cool you can fit a music stand right in here if you really need to travel with the music stand i hope you don't have to but you know it's good to have and over here you have a lot of space sometimes i even fit clothing in here it's really cool you can fit so much music here if you need to there are two pockets one like a small one over here and this really big one i'll just open it and show you how much space is in here so you can see and it really expands quite a bit you can fit quite a few things in here now if you do decide to get one of those covers for your case there is just one thing you need to be aware of and that is if you are going to put that on then you might have a problem fitting the violin overhead however tsa doesn't really pay attention to that so what i do is when i get on the plane if i'm carrying that thing i take this off before putting the violin in the overhead bin so when this goes up there you take this off you unclasp it take it out put it up there and then you put this right next to it and it's totally fine that's what i do all, all the time and also with the large backpack that i also have with me ladies you want to put your small purse inside your backpack so essentially you can travel with four things 
without checking anything in. Regarding clothing, you wanna have your heaviest clothing on you. The biggest shoes you have, so like sneakers, if you're traveling with those, or boots, like big boots if you're traveling in the winter, have those on you so you have less things packed. I also like to have a very small pack right in the front here. So a very thin one, the kind that can be hidden under my sweater. Those are great for your phone, for your passport, if you need a place to put it. That way the passport is very easy to take out, show it to the agent and keep going without having to stuff it in and find where it needs to go. So it goes like this. You can get through the security gate much quicker that way. Just when you are going through security, if you're wearing those extra things around your waist, just do remember to take them off. Another thing that's really helpful for me is the type of clothes that I pack. And this is more difficult for some than others. Now, luckily I'm a very small person, so my clothing doesn't take up that much space, but the kind of clothing that I pick is always the kind that can easily fold and roll. Something that's not going to wrinkle. Um, usually something from Uniqlo. Um, because it's very very easy to pack and now going back to the violin just remember also make sure you bring extra strings um, make sure to bring a bow that does not have any ivory in it if you are traveling overseas just don't bring a bow with ivory i mean unless you are making some kind of mega sale or something i just don't see the point of going through that chance uh, if you're a great violinist you're going to sound great with you know, with a standard bow. All right, so that's pretty much it for today. Um, these are some things that have been very helpful for me. I hope this video has been helpful for you. And if you have some stories of traveling that you have for me, put those down in the comments below. I'm really interested. And if there are some questions that I did not cover here, please put those down as well. So maybe I'll cover them in a future video or, or write about them. Now, if you would like a summary of all of my content in both video and written form, sign up for my bi-monthly newsletter. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell. I upload every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern. All right, happy traveling, and I'll see you next time.